What does Everest mean to you? You've climbed Everest, you refer a couple of times to your uh, getting to the top of Everest. Uh, what does it mean to you? I think I just became fascinated with Everest a few years back. It was tied in to the science of it. I, re I realised that the science had been fundamental in getting to the top and as a scientist myself I found that mm. really interesting and so I started to read more about it and learn more about the history of Everest. So for me going to Everest was, was really, uh, I just wanted to see it. Mm. I, I really just wanted to, to see these places that I read about so much, like right. go into the Western Coombe and up the Lotsey Face to the South Col. And, right. and so it was an incredible, incredible place to see. I didn't even know like, when I went if I could actually go to the top. I mean, I, I hoped I could, I thought yeah. I could. I mm. wouldn't have gone if I didn't think I could, but you never really know. And so you saw it as a sort of an extreme environment where this love of yours, science, would somehow come into a sharper focus, would somehow, where you'd get to experience science in a different way because it's in a, an abnormal situation. Was that your interest in it then? I was still at Imperial College doing my PhD. And so I did my first bits of climbing through one of the, the university clubs. But then quite quickly, I met some people from the Alpine Club who encouraged me to join. And it was worthwhile for me because I didn't have that network of climbers mm. all around me. It was really great to be able to meet other people who, who liked climbing and wanted to climb. And, and so the, the community aspect of the club right. was really useful for me. Uh, but it was also what got me in, into Everest in the end because through that, uh, I was invited to help on the organizing committee of the 60th anniversary celebrations of the first ascent of Everest. And as part of that, I began to learn a lot more about Everest and the history of it. Mm. And it was also really inspiring because I was on the organising committee with people like Rebecca Stevens, who was the first British woman to climb Everest, uh, and some people who were like family members of the, the men in the first, oh, in the right. 1953 right. expedition. Okay. And, and then of so course there were- direct contact at yeah, all then. Yeah, direct contact. And then there were people who were speaking, who'd been to Everest. And so I kind of got closer to Everest in a way, I, I realised through, through my own climbing, like, what I was capable of. And I was inspired by lots of other people and it sort of became a bit like, closer and more right. manageable and I yeah. realized that with a bit more experience, I could probably climb it. And mm -hmm. because I became interested in the science as well, when I realized that, that like, the science was like, fundamental to getting to the top in 53, the science sort of attracted me to learn more about it. And yeah, I wanted to sort of see how, how the improvements in science and technology now make Everest safer. And right. so that was kind of my goal in going to Everest myself. Of course, I wanted to see these places and mm. see if I could climb it, but I also wanted to investigate some of the science behind it and how we like nowadays could improve performance and safety because yeah. death rate's been going down, which is, is a really right, good right. thing. Okay. Yeah. You've made films about the science of Everest. What were your most interesting uh, discoveries from your own personal experience point of view? There are a few interesting things actually. And, and, and one of the things that I find really interesting is, is something that I did in the, in the preparatory phase, uh, which was to look at the statistics around Everest. And if you, look at, if you look at the statistics, it can sort of help inform your own preparation because mm -hmm. you, can, you can see where the most dangerous parts of the mountain are and you can see why people get into trouble as right. well. And yeah. so you can use that information to try and not make them the same mistakes mm -hmm. yourself. Okay, so you think so. examining st statistics made you a safer person well, to be on Everest? What I found interesting about the statistics is that there are two like, main dangerous parts, if you like, on mm. the south route. Uh, one of those is the icefall, but you can't really do much about the icefall dangers yeah. because uh, they're things that you can't control. So avalanches, serac falls, that kind of thing. So for the ice wall, you really have to go through as quickly as you mm. can. Um, but the other part, the other area on the mountain where people really struggle is, um, understandably, the summit ridge. So on the on summit day, when you're above 8,000 meters, uh, this, this is a really dangerous time, and this is where most people die. And if you look at the statistics, you can see that actually they all, most of the deaths boil down to the same thing, and that's exhaustion. Right. It might be listed as, um, it might be listed as altitude sickness or a fall or um, just exposure. Mm. But all of these things really come down to the same thing because there are ropes that are fixed all the way to the summit now. So you shouldn't fall unless you're making a mistake. Mm. Um, 
altitude sickness as well is very well understood and you can get better by going down. So yeah. unless you can't go down, you shouldn't be dying of altitude sickness. Um, and exposure is just the same thing. Um, unless you're stuck there and you can't get down, you shouldn't be dying of exposure. So mm. that sort of said to me that it's in, if you get exhausted in the death zone and you just sort of sit down to have a rest and never yeah. get up again, that's when you're gonna get in, into trouble. You have to be able to walk out the death zone. So you have to manage yourself well enough, like feed yourself enough, make sure you're drinking enough, and make sure that you're uh, mentally alert and not so exhausted that you're um, you know, lo losing mm. your ability to like, make yeah, decisions. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you have to sort of, cult even I, the way I used to think of it was you have to cultivate the ability to turn around before you get to that point where you're like so strung out you can't yeah. make decisions. And you got to the summit, uh, amazing experience? Or? Yeah, I was really lucky. I happened to be, don't ask me like how I managed it or why I got this lucky, uh, but I was first in, in the line, it just so happened that we left um, ahead of other teams and then I got ahead of my teammates just because my pace was slightly greater than theirs. And um, so I was at the front and in the end I got up to the summit about an hour before anybody else and just in time for sunrise. So I, as nice. I was walking across the summit slopes it was still dark mm. and gradually I could see like colour on the horizon oh, breaking beautiful, through beautiful. and uh, then we got to the summit just as it was getting light and we, we couldn't, it was too dark to take photographs then, we sat there, we watched the sunrise and then after that we took some pictures and, mm. and all of that and um, yeah it was extraordinary really because nobody else was there, like some people have, they share the summit with several other climbers mm. but it was just me and my Sherpa Tenzing. You don't really appreciate it at the time because like at the time you're just relieved to be up there that you don't have to walk up anymore. Yeah. Like you've been, I've been hanging on in there for, for months. Like it's, it is, it's really funny because it is a mental game. Like I went there wanting to investigate the science uh, of Everest because I found that all the old, all the old historical accounts, they always talk about Everest as it being like the strength of the human spirit that enabled them to get up this mountain. Mm. Whereas I thought that really it was, it was the science and the technology that yeah. had really contributed to them getting up the mountain. But actually the strength of the human spirit refers to our psychology and that is, it's also science by the way, but <laughs> it's really, really important. It, it really is like, your psychology is, is make or break. Right. You've just got to hang on in there for two months of, of hardship, just like shuttling up and down, getting yeah. used to the altitude, hot days, steep climbs. Mm. Um, Bad weather bad weather it's it's hard work yeah. and so when you get to the summit you feel relieved mm. that you don't have to go up anymore so there you are find out lots more about the alpine club on on the website whatever that is you can find it find <laughs> out more about melanie 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 windridge you're all over social media twitter youtube lots of interesting things yeah. apparently melanie physics finds you too, <laughs> you know? so that's, that's a good take so thanks for having this i feel like uh, our minds been broadened here a lot today uh really opened my mind to the science and how that interacts with these things like exploration so it's been a fantastic day thanks a million look forward to seeing you next time